That was amazing. Um, it's been 11 years. Um, have you continued to study this link between, you know, the the, the social and the and the physical health? Yes, we have, <laughs> um, and we've learned a lot that I think is really reinforcing the importance of taking seriously the way that we feel and the way that we construct meaning together as you know, community, as a society. What, what we're basically finding now is that the ways in which people construct narratives, the way in which they construct conscious feelings of the things they've witnessed in the world, not just what they've witnessed, but how they come to understand that turns out to be an amazingly powerful force, especially for young people's learning, we're finding. Mm -hmm. Also for teachers. We're now studying a lot of teachers and teenagers to look at how these things are fostered in a school context. So what's one of the more exciting things of your recent discoveries? Yeah, um, I think something that is truly truly astounding that is currently in our data is to do with a study of uh, kids from inner city Los Angeles from a range of diverse cultural and ethnic and immigration backgrounds who we began studying six years ago. And what I basically did was bring those teenagers who were ninth and 10th graders at the time, one at a time to USC, to our lab. And we, we talked with them about a whole bunch of ways in which they understand their life. But we sat down with them and I asked them one-on-one -on -one about those stories that I was describing in the 2011 TED Talk and asked them, how does this person's story make you feel? And these interviews were videotaped and the kids could say whatever they wanted. And what we found, we then moved the kids into the MRI scanner and asked them to react to the stories again. And then we also scanned their brains while they were just resting. Just stay awake, think about whatever you want. Then we sent them home and we brought them back again two years later. And then we contacted them again in young adulthood, now in their early 20s. And basically, the ways that young people responded to those questions of how does this person's story make you feel, no matter their family's socioeconomic status, no matter their IQ, no matter their sex, their ethnicity, Kids who showed us that they were deeply moved by the stories, curious about what happened next, and trying to do something that we're now calling transcendent thinking. Trying to take that story and move it into another lesson space of what does this mean for me? But what does this mean about what's right or good or just in the world? What does this mean about the nature of reality? What does it mean for my own purpose as a young person as I move into young adulthood? Kids who spontaneously started to go there, doing that predicted their brain growth over the next two years. That's like the holy grail in science. There's nothing else that we know of yet that predicts young people's brain development the way that this transcendent thinking does. And what we basically, let me just be clear, what we're doing is not saying that a particular kind of brain was associated with growth. What we're saying is no matter who you were, you know, Paul at age 15's brain, Paul at age 17's brain, how does Paul's brain change over those two years? That growth was predicted by this transcendent story making, and in turn, and this is the real kicker, the degree of growth predicted how happy young people were as young adults, how much they like themselves, how much they like their close relationships, their partner, their children, their, um, their co-workers, their schooling, if they're still in school, how much they think the opportunities they have in their life are just what they always hoped for themselves, no matter what those are. So what we've basically discovered is that the way in which young people make meaning of the social world 
is directly affording them opportunities to grow their minds and brains in ways that produce happiness and fulfillment and purpose. That's really powerful, I think. Wow. Yeah. So what's next? What, what, how far would you like to take this? Oh, there's tons to do. Right now, we also have um, a longitudinal study. That means a study where we're following the same people over time with high school teachers, teachers who we went into schools all over the city of LA in some of the poorest neighborhoods even and said like, administrators, principals, who are your superstars? Who are the teachers who are your mentors that the kids love, that the kids learn from, that the kids trust? Point us to them. And so we went to those teachers and said, can we study you? Can we hook you up like Borg to all kinds of psychophysiological recording of everything while we watch you teach your classes? Can we bring you to our lab and do brain imaging while you grade your students' homework, while you give feedback to your real students? And we're finding out amazing things about that the capacities that teachers build to be effective at promoting deep meaning making and safety in their young students. So that's one thing. And the other thing that we're very keen to look at is we studied this in the social world, but what about in mathematics? You know, mathematicians say and physicists say that equations that describe the future of the universe and explain the relationships between quantum theory and you know Newtonian mechanics are just so beautiful and gorgeous they just are the purpose of my professional life right is that the same kind of mechanism does engaging with deep disciplinary thinking around complex scholarly information also grow the brain and mind and you can like you can Bet I will lay my uh, lay my you know stake my claim on on the answer right now because what I think happens is that we repurpose the same systems in the brain that allow us to engage naturally with social meaning making which is just so ubiquitous in the ways in which we manage ourselves in the world we repurpose those systems to love mathematics, to engage with history, to make art, to love music. And so how can we design secondary schools that help kids feel deeply inspired in ways that will really grow their brains over time? That is the next frontier that we're going toward with this research. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, you're welcome.